Carolyn, can you throw me a pen that works? I think we're good, Barbara. It says on, on, on my screen, it's recording. Okay, we're all set then. Thank you. Okay. Okay, welcome to the Board of Health meeting. I need to read this nice short paragraph. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Southport Board of Health will be conducted be a remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be find, found on the Town of South Bros website. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch or participate in the meeting may do so in the following manner. By finding the meeting at the South Bro remote meetings, it's actually, says virtual meetings um, on the website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technology means. In the event that we are unable to do so despite best efforts, we will post the South Coast website an audio and or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Thank you, sorry, so long. <laughs> um, so welcome everybody. Heather, this is your first Board of Health meeting. Um, All right. It's, um, <laughs> it's gonna be a short one. Here um, to learn. Yeah, we had, uh, we only have a few things on the agenda. I don't think it's gonna to take too long, um, but um, we have a couple of votes. Does everybody have the agenda and does everybody have the minutes of the last meeting? Yes. Okay. yes. So I'm gonna to move to approve the meetings of the last meeting first. Um, Nancy, do you have any thoughts or comments on that? No, I thought it looked, they looked great. Okay. So I vote to accept the. Uh, oh. Oh, hold on, one second. Sorry, Sorry Paul. Uh, can I uh, jump in? Sure. On both minutes, the minutes that you're taking up uh, the vote on now, uh, and <clears throat> Barbara, I'm not sure whether it was a Freudian slip or purposeful. I don't think it was. I was in attendance at both, but my name is not mentioned as being in attendance. Oh. Oh, we oh, need to fix that. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I, I apologize. Know, I got you I on there now. I'll fix it. <laughs> that happens to me at all the minutes I review. I'm never on the list. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry about that. Paul. Got to watch those things, Heather. Yeah. Good catch, I, Paul. Yeah. It's easy to find my name, though. It's up top, but yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Other than that, is there, um, can I approve to vote to approve the minutes? Yeah, and this is Nancy Sacco, and I approve uh, to approve the minutes. And Both this is Mary approve. Lou Woodford, and I approve the minutes as is. Yes. Great. Um, so this next item on our agenda is um, the appointment of Emily Amico to per diem nurse. Um, Emily, I just want to say thank you so much. I know you you had to change your resignation date to add another week to cover our clinics. And we really appreciate that. You were phenomenal at, at doing that and thank you. And we are very excited that you are willing to stay on as per diem nurse. Um, yes. And didn't know if you had any thoughts or comments. Um, well, I just, I wanna be able to support a, a smooth transition and you know, support the residents of the town. So, well, thank, thank you. you. I, I I hope that that helps. <laughs> it does. And in particular, you want to see through some of the clinics. Oh, There's yes. second yes. dose for Hopkinton, and we're working on the senior well, they, housing and yeah. homebound clinics. So, I think in particular, you also wanted to see that through. Yes, definitely. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of changes at the state level in regards to vaccinating on a local level, 
but definitely want to see through what we've already started, um, which is completing the, the second dose with our 75 plus population that we vaccinated um, earlier this week and last week. And so that'll be three weeks from now. And then, um, and then we're gonna, we're working on um, the housing authority clinic. So that should be coming in the next few weeks as well. Awesome. And then we'll have to vaccinate them again in four weeks. April, after that. Right. <laughs> right. If all goes as planned. Yeah. Um, so I wanna make a motion to vote to um, accept Emily Amico as a per diem nurse. And I second the motion. Okay, and I want to take a vote to approve Emily Amico. This is Mary Lou Woodford, approve Emily Amico as a per diem nurse. And this is Nancy Sacco, and I also vote yes to approve Emily Amico as a per diem nurse for South Row. Woohoo! Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. I uh, know, thank you <laughs> for not um, running away. <laughs> and the other vote we have is. Um, a vote of I like to take a motion of the board as you remember we um, we had an interim period where um, one of the board members had to sign payroll and, and invoices and now that Heather is on board I'd like to make a motion to take a vote to um, give those authorities um, to Dr. Heather Elker for payables and payroll. I second the motion and so I'd like to take a vote to um, transfer uh, authority for the interim health director, Dr. Heather Alker, to sign payroll and payables for the Board of Health. And this is Nancy Sacco. I vote yes to giving Heather Alker the capability of signing payroll and payables. Payables for the time of South for Board of Health. Great. And um, uh, Barbara reminded me that in order for that transaction to happen, we have to approve the minutes of this meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, oh, so, wow. that, so the actual transfer won't happen till the next meeting. So Nancy, if you're still available to come down and sign for the next, till our next meeting. Sure. I think um, Barbara is Dan coming on Monday. Cause I can also, if he can. If you want to stop by on Monday too, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. I can talk to him. Either one of us. I'm okay. on. I'm on the weekend, but I'm off Monday. Okay. Perfect. I'll be there. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Mary Lou, I'll upload it to DocuSign for you. Great. Thank okay. you. So I, um, speaking of of that, just so everybody knows, we have the ability to use DocuSign. So if there's any times we need uh, something oh. signed for, whether it be an approval, whether it be you know something else that the board normally needs to sign, we have the ability to use DocuSign, which is- Is that something like I'd need the app? No, okay. you, you, you get sent an email and you just kind of log in and it's a secure encrypted way to give your signature. Oh, okay. So, but it just allows us to do it electronically instead of having to go to the office and actually make a signature. Okay. It's, it's, it's another tool in our toolkit, I guess I would say. Okay. Um, so for next, um, the next part of the agenda, I just um, wanted to talk about updates on where we're at with COVID. Um, Heather, if you can just give an update with the, the vaccine, all the changes that have happened in the, in the state and changing their rules and you know, giving vaccine to municipalities and all that. I think it would be uh, helpful to yeah, give that was everybody an update on that changed this week. Yeah. So we had um, looked through a plan um, before I came on um, with vaccination with um, a sort of a plan for a vaccination um, with Steve Achilles and um, fire chief at the school at uh, prior from prior emergency preparedness plans. And um, as we got into the um, state rollout of the vaccine phase one, the um, first responders um, were in on a, a six town, I think collaborative that were vaccinated in Westboro. Um, and then the next um, phase 
was the 75 year olds. And I know that, um, you know, Emily and I are very committed to that population. It's a population that, you know, is not easily met at, you know, these vac mass vaccination centers that were, you know, um, opening up originally four, now there's um, six, I think. So in any case, with the um, local population in the age 75 range, um, Hopkinton reached out to us with some availability potentially for Pfizer vaccine. There's a little more storage requirements, um, but that was successful with um, Hopkinton. They paired with um, five towns, initially the three, Ashland and um, Southborough and ours. And also Emily did a Google form um, that we posted on our website um, for folks interested in the vaccine, just to sort of alert them about opportunities that we hear about for vaccine. And so the Hopkinton Clinic um, ran, all doses were used. Um, and uh, Emily and I um, did, I think, five homebound residents, six homebound residents. Um, as part of that clinic, we signed through um, Emily through the um, prep mod. Um, I worked two days at the Hopkinton Clinic. I think Emily was there most days for the Hopkinton Clinic. And there are three days set for a second dose. So that was one thing with the age 75. Um, also, um, uh, Emily and I and Leslie Chamberlain are very committed to um, partnering with the Housing Authority at Colonial Gardens. And um, the governor sort of kind of up dates kind of specifics to the phases as we've been going. So the next step, which opened yesterday, is age 65, senior housing, that's all residents and employees of the senior housing, and um, those with two medical conditions. So that has now opened up 100, uh, not 100 million, 1 million, but it crashed the website, the 1 million folks trying to sign up for vaccine yesterday. So the new eligibility there um, for that. And the senior housing um, for the state DPH to release vaccine is a little more um, of a separate pot, if you will. So um, we're working on that with Lynn Trombley to get something going for um, the Senior Housing Authority. Um, and in terms of the municipalities, the state released this week, um, basically they're not going to uh, release a vaccine to um, uh, municipalities. And so Hopkinton put in a request this week, but it's very, very likely going to be denied, you know, to get a batch to do a clinic for the 65 plus. It's, it's unlikely, but uh, I think we'll find out late Friday. Next week, I'll put in for the senior housing and find out that next Friday if I get that. So the um, state is now... Um, released to the municipalities that they're really encouraging um, municipalities to um, encourage residents to the mass vaccination sites and through pharmacies. And um, they do have that limited uh, supply for the homebound and the um, housing authority, um, senior housing. So the um, mass vaccination site opens next week at Natick Mall. Um, and that's apparently in the old, nor the old Sears building. I used to go there, but you know, apparently that end of the mall. And um, I, I think with that, the Hopkinton is likely going to be denied because um, they're really just doing a couple, couple um, regional applications for uh, municipalities with many folks partnering together, which we did, but it's not, it's not. Um, we're not in a kind of a real remote vaccine desert. So I think that's that. And, um, you know, they're encouraging uh, municipalities to think about transportation options. Um, this morning they said, um, you know, FEMA with reimbursement for some of these clinics can potentially reimburse for transportation costs if you want to put something together. Um, I think we need to work on communication with this for our residents. Um, getting them interested in vaccine and, and um, you know, ways to access it with communication. Um, so that's kind of a overview of where we are now with the um, phases. Yeah, and that's a big change. Um, yes, so so the, 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 all these towns have been planning for months I and know. then that's done. Although we were joking yesterday on a call with the 
um, health agents that, you know, the state wants to do them all at the mass vaccination sites. Um, but, you know, come a couple months from now, they may have, you know, fatigue from that and ask the towns to then get more well, done. Of, we don't one know. Of, one of the challenges I think we have in, in the, this approach and many of the municipalities have voiced the same concern. There are people that don't have a car yep. and they can't just can't get there. And so I think we're gonna see in the next month or so, a, a bigger outcry from some of the municipalities wanting to serve those underserved people that don't have transportation, they don't have the ability to stand in line for two hours, you know, and, and those kinds of things. So. I think we'll be hearing more about that, but it's unfortunate, you know, that this is the direction, but I think we need to give our residents the most information we can. So on our website, give them the link to um, get those, even though the, the site is still not functioning at this point. Um, I had talked to someone who got halfway through and then it crashed. Um, so it's, um, I'm sure that'll get figured out in the next day or two. Does any, Nancy, do you have any questions? Does anybody have any questions for um, Heather about? No, I just, that? thank you for doing all those vaccinations and getting out to the people at their houses. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, we want uh, to I know, uh, a, we have a list of a few more, yeah. Yeah, and then Marlboro's doing quite a few and there is a wait list for the 75 and over right now for if there's any leftovers, they'll call you, but you have to be able to um, get there within 90 minutes. So, you know, that's an option too, but that's not the only other thing I've heard of, so. Mm -hmm. there, there has been quite a bit of anxiety with the residents. Um, I have fielded dozens of calls this week with all the changes, um, and I'm sure Barbara as well in the office. Um, you know, people who have received through the 75 plus and people who don't want to travel to these places or people who don't know how to register. Um, lots of different concerns, but um, I, I haven't gotten any calls yet today. So <laughs> I mean, Wednesday I think it's going to be was, yeah. is very busy. Yeah. For some older people going to Patriots, <laughs> Gillette and, you know, Fenway Park is just unrealistic. So I'm glad the Natick Mall is opening but still I think I think we're not going to reach a lot of people so well a lot of the older ones too they have like Emily said they have a lot of trouble navigating on the internet I'm not saying if they even have it like some don't even yeah. have internet but I've had to walk people through as well and you have to do this you have to do that you know and that was just for Hopkinton but still so the the 211 line um is is taking helping people oh. through making appointments um, right now, but again, yesterday it was down, um, and two one one was not answering calls as well. So, or they were answering calls, but everyone couldn't get through. Um, I, <laughs> a million people trying to get appointments, <laughs> sort of ridiculous. But um, I mean, I was just—I I think that it's a positive thing that so many people want to be vaccinated. I think Absolutely. that's really a good sign. Um, but hopefully people don't get discouraged and, and, you know, put it off. I think it will loosen up as, yeah. you know, the, the demand spreads out. So, yeah, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but 211 actually you can call and then be on a callback list when an appointment opens up. So, right. And you don't need to do for, for elderly people. Oh, um, that's good. So they, they don't have to give all the information and then when an, an appointment opens up, they get a call back and they can accept the appointment. Oh, nice. Okay. So, so that I think is, it's just for the mass vaccination sites, right, Emily? Uh, I think whatever is available on, okay. on the mass immunizations.org. Mm -hmm. 211 seems to be the so where they're trying to funnel all, most of the questions and the information. And 211 is, is, is a general line. So if someone needs fuel assistance or food assistance or other things, they can help with all of those things. So um, it, 
it's not perfect, but it, it's, um, it can be really helpful for some people and especially for trying to figure out the whole um, vaccine appointment scheduling. So people should know about 211. We should make sure we put that in our communications. Mm -hmm. Um, does anybody have any other questions on the COVID vaccine stuff or COVID related issues? Well, I actually have a question. Are you looking for like nurses to give immunizations or are you all set with that? I mean, I'm sure I could find people. Um, I, we've had quite a few volunteers, okay. us, but we don't have a date yet for, okay. um, the housing authority. So I think it's going to be a quick turnaround, likely. Okay. Yeah, they, you find out and it could be right within a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you find okay. out, then it gets delivered within the next four to five days. Then you have to give it within 10 days. So, right. You know, well, let me know because I'm sure I can get, you know, people I work with to help if you need any. And awesome. I'll, I'll certainly help if I'm not working. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so we want to go to the, um, I guess while we're talking about staffing and all of that, I'm going to kind of jump to the, give it every, you know, an update on our staffing. So, um, we, we did post the public health nurse position, the full-time position, um, advisory gave us approval to move forward with, uh, reserve funds, uh, and it would cover any, uh, funds that the CARES Act didn't cover, um through the end of December. And so we put the, the posting up and actually got some really wonderfully qualified um, candidates. Uh, unfortunately, the fact that the position is only guaranteed through December is a, is a stumbling block. And we had two nurses that highly, highly qualified. I was like jumping for joy. Heather was jumping for joy. and. And, and they rescinded because of that, um, the budgeting issue and knowing that the contract can only go through December. So we've put it back out. Uh, anybody who knows of anybody who might be interested, there are a lot of public health nurse positions out there right now that are vacant. Um, our salary is competitive. Um, the only stumbling block is, you know, it's only through December in hopes that the 22 budget will be approved and then we'll be able to go past that. Uh, but I just wanted to give everybody an update on that. And I, um, I did reach out to some of my public health nurses, uh, uh, colleagues, and, and they're putting feelers out as well. Yeah, I'm reviewing more resumes. Um, I can send those along. Um, the when I was meeting with the um, Metro West health agents, um, some of them had posted um, for a vaccine coordinator that they now don't need to hire because the towns aren't doing the vaccine. Oh, so some of them said, oh, I'll pass along what I got for the vaccine <laughs> coordinators, but. Okay. I know. I, I'm, I'm optimistic, but it's yeah. just, um, it, it's, it, it hasn't been as smooth as I as I thought it would, things were moving too well and too good, mm. like, so. Um, yeah, I looked at the Indeed and the Clear Company again, but. Okay, all right, so Nance, but send it to, send the job posting I know, I work job with a, a woman who I think would be perfect, but she doesn't want full time, so. Okay. Um, and she's looking to retire anyway, so I don't know how that would work. Right. But um, I will, I'll, I'll pass it along. Um, and let's see, our 22 budget, has everybody looked at that? Yeah. Okay. Um, Barbara, I had a question on a couple things that I might call you after we get off the, off the call, just on where things are organized in there. So as everybody knows, we're, we're going to, um, Heather and I will go before advisory next week, um, Advisory is the first step in the budget process. Um, we will plan on presenting at town meeting. Um, we ha have an opportunity to talk to the residents about the health department, what we've done, how we've done it. Um, I'm gonna ask the moderator for some time at the beginning in the first warrant where we have a chance to talk about 
what's been going on. And then we'll have our, our budget discussion as well. And uh, Heather and I have been working on a, a kind of a presentation and it's trying to figure out how to advocate for the budget and the need for the budget as an ongoing core staff in a short, succinct, and to the point way. You know, I, I want to give a public health 101, but that would bore everybody. So it's like, how do you, how do you figure out a way to list the, the roles and responsibilities of staff and why we need to do that? Um, Heather, I just sent you. Uh, yeah, I saw Sam's, that. That looked good. I thought it looked great. Sam Stivers, he's been very helpful. As everybody knows, he's our advocate to the selectmen. He took all of the, the regulatory uh, requirements uh, from the Mass Association of Health Boards and listed it in a table. And so, um, so Heather, maybe you and Paul can walk through that and see, um, you know, where. I'm not sure the headers on the top make the most sense, but, but I think it's a great start. And I think it will help people to better understand all of the responsibilities. And we need to think about some of the things, and Paul, you'd be really helpful with this, is like some of the things that don't come up that often, but you need to know about it because when it does come up, you, you need to deal with it. And so if it's if it's a regulatory or statutory requirement, we need to list that on the list and, and make sure we can see how. One example comes to mind is the drinking water and we don't think about drinking water, but now there's all this information about PFAS and you know we need to know about it. We need to educate the public about it. And so drinking water is something that everybody knows we need, but they don't think about the health department being involved in that. You're absolutely right. And I hopefully, Monday, uh, I'll be meeting again on the phone with uh, Heather, and I've got uh, I've touched on a couple of the esoteric or remote uh, items that come up from time to time. Not that often, uh, but we can go back, and I, I gloss over a lot of things and don't go into the detail, unfortunately, because we just don't have the time. Uh, Heather's very busy with other webinars and so forth from DPH and so we, there are other things that come up in it. One was the PFAS, other issues with the drinking water, which is uh, now they're finding out more and more, a lot of the private well waters are, the uh, pH is lower in many cases. A lot of people were not too alarmed about that, but now they're realizing that does, does leach out a lot of lead, cadmium and other heavy metals. Uh, there's also, of course, as you remember years ago, we had the issue with arsenic we had that vein of arsenic in radionuclides that came down from Maine right through and it hit our northern section of South Bay where we sent out letters to all the wells owners to get their wells tested. Uh, but there's a whole host of drinking water issues, which I will go over with Heather on, but that should be something that you could put in the budget for the advisory to let them know. A lot of people don't realize because 90% or 85% of the town is on town water on meaning that it was MWRA water. But there are these other, the other thing is of course, very little comes up, but on occasion, and Dennis is fully aware with this, is the beaver dam issue. A lot of right. people will fall and they're very upset and the dams are building up. And, you know, I, I just touched on it very, really just in a very, very light way with, with Heather, but I want to go into the more detail about that. That's a state law. Only the Board of Health is allowed to issue a eradication or beaver removal permit. Right. And that's a very complicated process that has to be pursued. The other is the um, uh, illicit discharge bylaw. Again, it's a bylaw that the town passed. Southbro is the enforcer of that bylaw. It's a town bylaw. And again, it doesn't come up that often, but when it does, it's usually something that a lot of, will name, a lot of people are very upset about. You know, the, of course, we, you heard about the stinky streams, but we've had other issues with pipes that literally will going into swamps or wetlands, I mean, and, and um, or brooks and tributaries and so forth that were leaching out people's washing machine water and uh, other issues. So I want to make, you know, Heather aware of those in so that she can make the advisory committee aware because a lot of that doesn't come up that often, but they do when they do, we've got to address them. And the, the other thing, which is I uh, just touch on, uh, which the board may want to think about um, uh, 
as you know, I have been appointed to numerous ad hoc and actually active committees as the boards of health representative. I don't think you want me to continue with that. I don't, I don't I'm not going to have the time. One of them, of course, is the uh, public safety committee. That allows, uh, if you have a participant from the public health sector, meaning the public health director, attending those meetings, and they're usually once a month or once every other month, Mark Purple, uh, facility manager, DPW, police and fire, basically re gets a reduction in the town's insurance rate. But I think that's something you probably want to have Heather appointed to. The other is the um, stormwater phase two committee. I don't know whether that I, I just barely touched on that with Heather, but that's something that's a town bylaw that requires participation by a board of health representative. And again, it doesn't have to be a staff. It could be one, <laughs> one of the elected members. I don't think you, but that's something we don't meet that often recently, but we did before quite often. And it all has to do with the stormwater issues that all came down, emanated from the EPA down to DEP and then downtown at each city and town and how they have to basically enforce that. And I can go into the particulars of what that involves, but there's gonna be more and more about stormwater and especially with the so-called warming, uh, weather changes that are um, coming about, uh, have one in 100 storm, one in 100 year storms that are coming every one in 25 years. Um, these are all anomalies that uh, because of geomorphologic conditions, a lot more paving of roads and roofs and so forth. And you've seen a lot of these infrastructures going in, but it all results in the fact that uh, the town has got to address that whole issue. And it's a big, big issue. And, and Karen Galligan literally pulls her hair out when these issues come up because it just puts more and more work on her part. But anyway, that's, I just touched on that. Um, the other thing is, um, we don't have, unfortunately, a lot of this is verbal and narrative, and it's hard for me. I, When I used to be an adjunct professor, I loved the blackboard. As you know, I'm more visual orientated. I like the chalkboard, the whiteboards we have in the, in the town office, because I like to draw things out. That's, it helps me to convey the information, and I think for some people, it helps them understand what it is we're talking about, where you can see cross-sections of the uh, geohydrology and other hydrologic conditions and groundwater pollution, things of that kind. But that's it, I'll shut up. Um, oh, by the way, uh, I do intend to attend the, I, I, I'm paying for it myself, whether the board can reimburse me, that would be fine, that's something that's not on the agenda if we can take up at some other future meeting. But that's just to keep my certifications, but also for my knowledge, because again, on, it's a DEP issued in the MS Health Officers Association dog and pony show each spring. Dennis has gone to them and I've gone to them. It's a $40 charge. I've already written my check. I've already paid for my annual dues. I don't expect because it's not in my new contract. That I was, we had, things move was moving so quickly and Mary Lou was, was doing things amazingly fast and got a lot of things done, but I couldn't, she couldn't convey all the information. And when I saw the con I saw that that item for reimbursement on certifications was not in my contract, not my, my employment service contract. Um, I think with the understanding that Dennis would be certified in most of those, in a lot of those certifications, I'm not bothering with those of the swimming pool inspector, the, the summer camps, <clears throat> the restaurant inspections, housing code violations, lead paint determination, all those things I dropped except for soil evaluator and system inspector because I'm still involved. I still get calls. I was just on the phone this morning with Kevin O'Leary, Dennis, Jilson company. Uh, reminding him of what he needed to do with our new soil testing uh, permit requirements and um, other issues that came up. And then I emailed, I think, everybody about the issue of inspections on Monday and Tuesday, which we can talk about at some other future date uh, for issues that to, just to protect the town so we don't get, get caught in some sort of a rare, rare, rare liability issue. I'm cognizant. I've had enough of these addressed to me and Dennis when we go to meetings with lawyers that come from OSHA and so forth. And it's like, it may never happen, but if it does, I don't want it happening on my watch and heaven forbid the board gets caught and say, why did you tell us about that? But I can go into detail at some other future meeting when we can put that on the agenda and discuss it more fully. 
Yeah, no, that's it's great, wrong. Paul. And I, I think we know, I mean, we talked about there may be emergency inspections you need to do on a Monday or Tuesday when Dennis isn't available and, and using your judgment and your expertise to know which ones you need to do, which ones has to be done. And, and thank you for following up on that. Um, uh, don't know as we have anything <clears throat> else inspection wise, but Paul, the, the, the work you're doing with Heather, um, to get ready for the 22 budget thing. And I don't know, seeing you both been vaccinated, maybe you could meet in person and it might be helpful to go <laughs> over that checklist in person in the office next week, um, instead of on the phone. It's kind of hard on the phone to, to do everything, um, but you guys can talk about that. But I think next week's important um, to, to really have a good grasp of all of those things that you can explain better for Heather so she has a better understanding um, when we go before advisory. You don't first. know if you're going to be first, do you? I'm you scheduled are. at uh, scheduled at 6.30. Oh, all right, because I'm working. I'll see if I can switch it, because I would like to watch at least. Okay. Uh, it will be recorded. Okay. And I have another question. Does anybody know the date off the top of their head for town meeting this year? I heard it was June, sometime in June. I haven't. Well, Except it's at the exact date. Yeah, there's an, well, official, there's an official process that has to happen. And okay. so the, the, the March meeting has to get posted and then the moderator has 30 days to extend it and then another 30 days. But we're all thinking that it's gonna be sometime in June. Okay, because um, I just wanna make sure I... Yeah. It's, uh, as, as as, it's on Saturdays, it's, it seems to always fall on my weekend on so I just want to know ahead of time to request it off yeah totally that would be great we you know we need all the advocates that we can people yeah. that you know in town that support public health and sometimes mm -hmm. don't go to town meeting maybe right. they can go to town meeting and um you know we're we're gonna need people to support um we need, we need the residents to understand the situation that we're in um the future of public health in Southboro um uh, Tim Litt did a great job and it goes back to Paul, you talking about public safety and being part of the public safety. Um, I asked uh, Chief Achilles if Heather could be on the Code Red team. I, it's, um, I'm surprised there's never been a public health person on the Code Red team, but I asked him that, you know, our health director should be on that team. And, you know, it's little things like that. And, and when you think about the diagram that Tim Litt did, it's a triangle and one side of the triangle is police, the other side is fire and the bottom leg is public health. And, <laughs> and that is what those three prongs to that chair is what supports public safety in Southboro. And so we need to help residents understand all of the things that we're responsible to sort of uh, be part of that public safety effort. And, and it's hard to summarize, there's so much. Um, and, I, and I'm working hard to do that, Heather's working to do that, but I, you know, we'll share what we have and any input would be greatly appreciated. Good points. So um, I, think, I think we covered everything on the agenda. Does anybody have anything else they wanna add? Oh, did we have to do anything for that um, intern? Mary um, Elena Ferrero. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think Heather can talk about what she thinks she can help with. Um, okay. We don't need an official vote. We don't need to vote on anything. Okay. It's, it's not paid, but maybe. Right. Um, right. I mean, Heather, maybe you can speak to, you know, it's, it's an added resource for the health department that you guys both worked on getting. And, you know, I think townspeople needs to know that we're always working for, you know, ways to support the work we're doing that's not paid. But you also right. need to understand that if you bring on an intern, it takes a lot of mentoring help too. So, you know, it's not just getting, you know, someone who's not paid, but you also have to give mentoring and guidance, which takes yeah, away from true. whatever yeah. else you're doing. I know. So it's right. And, and I have to mentor. It has to be a master's level education to mentor. So, um, and. Um, oh, I see. Like you could. Okay. I didn't yeah. Know. The BSNs can't, the MSNs can. Um, so the. Um, 
Nancy referred um, Mary Elena Ferrero. She's an MPH student doing an online degree. Um, all she has left is this practicum and it's been um, tricky for her to get a site for a couple of reasons. She works full time currently from home, but she works, I think at uh, Maura Healy's office about um, complaints. I'm not sure of which type, but she works on those. And she has worked as a medical interpreter for many years. Um, she did a medical schooling in Peru before coming here and raised her daughters and lived in South Korea. And that's how you know her name. Yeah, exactly. Um, and she's uh, volunteered for um, Neil Spazi's certain MRC group. So Nancy, do you have any other background? I can jump uh, in. No, her older daughter and my middle daughter went to school together. Yeah. And um, she actually reached out to me. Um, I have, I kind of have lost touch with her except for Faith. Yeah, she, um, she, she's in Northboro. She just, is. Um, she moved to Northboro. Yes, she wise. used to live yeah. over near Capasso's for years. But um, I think when the kids were in high school, because it doesn't matter, they were at Algonquin, so she could move to Northboro. Um, but no, I think, you know, and she knows Maven, which I don't know, but I heard that. And I'm like, I think people will be excited about that. That's all I hear about. Do you know Maven? Right. So I'm she's like, going to know Maven. But right. I understand gonna... it's a useful thing. So uh, I have no I, idea. She works for the state. So she obviously has some, you know, from home. So she must right. be in some system. For yeah, that. she's done a lot of different things. I feel bad that they didn't, you know, she had this medical degree, but coming from Peru, it wasn't. Well, you know, I teach an here. MPH program at UMass. It's full of folks from medical degrees from other countries. Yeah. And unless they get a residency in this country, which is near impossible, then right. they're, they, I'm, I'm used to working with um, that population. Okay. Yeah. I have in UMass, most of them are for the students. So I said, you should have come to the UMass. She's like, I didn't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so she's in it online, but she might refer her daughter. Um, oh, good. Yes. UMass MPH. Yeah. Anyway, oh. so she um, she's going to work in um, nights and weekends on her own time. Um, right. Okay. And, but she can, she felt, you know, do some phone calls in the day, but um, is working full time. Um, she trained with Worcester DPH um, for Maven. But has never used it. So she's oh, using okay. oversight. She okay. trained through Worcester DPH and was going to be a Worcester DPH practicum. It's not oh, okay. it over three months. And so that didn't work out with um, Worcester uh, DPH. This Walden University wanted Worcester to be at like a satellite location and take a lot of interns. And they said oh, no. no. Okay. I mean, I said no as well. This is a one time thing. Yeah. With yeah. Mary Elena, we're not becoming a satellite location. Right. Yeah. Oh, I hope um, it's not going to be like more work for everybody. There. Well, we'll My see. Um, is to you know, the, the other thing, which I've, I've spoken with Walden, you know, this student, um, sort of some of the time management might, might not be quite there because she okay. seems to always apply late. So the issue now is I've done everything. I've signed the paperwork and I need to have a wet signature at some point, but I've done, I think, everything. And they are having their legal team review yeah, the site agreement. I saw your email. And that, in theory, should have been with them on January 11th. Okay. And it's with them on February 15th, not to anything that I've been slowing down. Oh, no, Just not at time all. time yours came to me and then I spoke with her and then she hope you know it just so anyway it may or may not happen okay based on the fact that legal from walden is going to approve it and that's okay. just it's a late it's an emergency review for them for walden okay. we're all set from our end far as i understand i need to do a wet signature on it it doesn't need to be a board member i asked if it needs to be one of you okay. guys all right. i said i can sign it um wet signature but it's not it's not that it's not that we're behind um she's behind yeah, it, and I then, okay. kind of understood that from your email. Okay, and then, you know, in terms of what she can do, Emily thought she could, if nothing else, um, you know, she would need oversight, I think, on Maven with the phone calls. She speaks okay. Spanish, but there's not a large population, I think, there that we need, but potentially, you know, running the reports, getting the numbers, kind of tracking. Um, I thought of a couple other things sort of in the background, if, if um, you know, uh, uh, the, I know um, tobacco when I spoke with um, Sarah McGaughan and the um, Olivia Dufour uh, that they um, 
you know, to update our policies, look at our regulations. Oh, you know, okay. so I think there's a couple other things I thought of in the background if this um, Corona vaccine, but, you know, there's communication, you know. Um, so, um, Emily, did you have any other thoughts on? It also may be maybe some data if she's good at data analysis. Like, I think Heather, you and I talked about the Metro West report. Yeah, the Metro West. So, yep. the Metro West. So you could definitely report, do data. The data yeah, report definitely. shows that Southboro. It, if you look at all the Metro West towns, I think it was 13 of them, we're, yeah. we're third in deaths by cancer. Yeah. Um, and we're fourth. And we're fourth in, in diabetes. Deaths by diabetes. So I, I think having some of that data to report to the residents would be really helpful. Um, so if yeah. you can work on some of those things and trying to figure out sort of an assessment report, which is going to be helpful going into 22 with, you know, what is an assessment of where we're at from a health perspective and self? Right, I think I put that like community health assessment. Yeah, I yeah. Put that down. And yeah, let's hope by twenty two we'll have some other things we can be working on instead of just <laughs> COVID. Uh, and, but um, I think I think Nancy, the thing that is uh, a little bit challenging right now, and I've heard it from people, is like, what are you going to do post COVID? And I just want to reiterate. I believe COVID is not going away. Oh, no. Um, no you it's know, it, it, We're it, getting people now with these exactly. post-COVID symptoms. Post-COVID symptoms. Yep. You know, they test negative, but yet their kidneys are being affected. And it's, it's yep. quite frankly, it's very scary. And they're not, right now, they're not faring very well. Right. By the time they hit the ICU anyways, maybe they're doing better on the floors. I don't know. But the so ones we're seeing are not doing well. And there's right. this weird... They're negative now. They've been treated with everything. And then they come back almost with similar symptoms. Kid, uh, one guy now is getting dialysis and he's, you know, been, he had it a lot, like in back in the fall. It's crazy. I don't know. So, yeah. So you have all those post post COVID, you know, sort of health impacts. Yeah. You also have post COVID, you know, social isolation issues for a lot of people. Um, we may be vaccinating every year or at least I, giving I a booster. So, mm-hmm. so uh, and that's probably going to fall on the cities and towns, even yeah. though this mass vaccination is not. So uh, I think our post COVID era is far in the future. Yeah. Um, and, and so we need to make sure that we have the staffing and the structure to handle all of those. Yeah, things. I know. We got to get the kids back to school. We have young, young, young kids with mental health issues, spending yep. weeks, weeks in our ER because there's nowhere for them to That's go. what we heard. That's what we heard. At the... hmm. I'm talking like under 12 years yeah, old. Yeah, no, that's what They're we just heard. Remember, Emily, and and we in that meeting. Hanging out yeah. in, the, in the ER. It's just terrible. There's nowhere for these poor kids. Timothy Litt would like to say something. Are you okay? Oh, sure. Sure. Here you go. Hi, Tim. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. How are you? Well, at least uh, we're inside and the snow isn't too bad. I just wanted to make a few comments on going after the 22 budget presentation. Okay. Um, first is, I think it, as I've said before, I think it's really important to position the department as a public safety function. I don't think the town understands that. And I think, you know, given how important the town views public safety, it's really important to tie you together with that function. Um, The second thing is, I think as you talk about it, it's important to talk about things in a concrete fashion, you know, the concrete functions, the services that you deliver, and not the so much the what I call the aspirational stuff, you know, the 10 reasons that, you know, public health exists. I looked at those, you know, when I was, you know, trying to put something together for you to start with. And a lot of that talks about organization and why it's it's sort of self-justification for public health. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but you're not training people to do public health. I think what people respond to is, I can't sell my house because I can't get the septic system, you know, inspected for 10 weeks. Um, I can't drink the water because, you know, so I think it's really important, you know, to emphasize, you know, those concrete things that people can relate to rather than the things that you would talk to other folks about when you were trying to build an organization. Right. So you have to put yourself sort of in the shoes of someone who doesn't think 
public health. Right. The third comment I'd make is I also think it's important as you talk about those uh, to talk about the consequences of falling short and also fessing up to the fact that you have fallen short, not because you're bad people, but because you've been under-resourced and you know, you've done a wonderful job as caretakers, but things have not advanced and things have not things that have come your way have not been added because you haven't had the resources and you haven't, you know, had the ability to advocate for it. So I think it's important, you know, you talk about the concrete functions and you talk about um, you know, why it's a bad thing if you don't do them. Because you're going to get the, well, we've lived without this for, you know, for so long. Why can't we live without it for another year? This is a bad year. Right. Well, I've been in town over 30 years and every year is a bad year. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's time to do something. And the fourth thing I, I'd say is you don't want to uh, encourage or, you know, allow the advisory committee to go down the path it's been going, which is, you know, creative financing considerations have been driving how they think about this budget request. And they've been driving how they want you to staff. And, you know, as you reported trying to get a full-time public health nurse, um, people don't sign up to uncertainty, you know, unless they're in that business, but those aren't the people you want to solve the long-term problem. Right. So, I mean, I do think, you know, it's important to get advisory to come along, but you also need to remember that you are an independent board. You have the right to put a budget before town meeting, whether or not advisory goes along, whether or not the selectmen go along, you have the right to put forth the budget that you think meets the public health needs. And you shouldn't be shy about doing it. And so well, the last right. comment along those lines is um, several times in the past 30 odd years, the library, which is another uh, independent board that has the same ability, um, has gone directly to town meeting because the advisory wouldn't recommend and even the selectmen wouldn't recommend what they wanted to do. And every time that I can recall that they went before town meeting with a plea saying, you know, this is why it makes sense. And, you know, we understand the financial constraints, but they've succeeded. I, I think that's where the, that's probably what's going to happen, Tim. So uh, we're prepared to do that. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't have a lot of confidence that it's our budget's going to get proved as is unless we go uh, to the residents um, and, and let them know uh, what it is that we need and um, what the town needs from a public health perspective. So I appreciate all that you've said and uh, we do have our work cut out to, to try to frame it in a way um, I have been told similar to what you said is, you know, one of the aspects we need to think about is, you know, what's going to happen if you don't fund this, if we don't have a full-time health director and a full-time nurse, you know, is the sky going to fall? Like what's going to happen? And so we need to be able to address those pieces too. You know, I think the sky has been falling. It's just, it's been falling so slowly. No one's noticed. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And and, you know, for what it's worth, my offer remains open. I'd be happy to look over what you come up with and give you, you know, my free advice, which is worth every penny you pay for it. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. We, we really appreciate your yeah. support. Very good. <laughs> but I, I mean, I got to say with all the environmental stuff going on in the world too, I mean, we're going to have issues coming down the road again with just, you know, water and, and, you know, other health issues that we're going to need a bigger staff. I mean, it's just the writing is kind of on the wall. I mean, yeah, but Nancy, like it's even like you just said, you know, there's so many things that come up. People don't realize that I don't know how much time did we spend on that whole 5G, you know, oh um, oh. and, and, and looking at 5G coming into the town and how does it impact the health of people? Um, I think the residents have no idea that we, um, we were involved in that whole discussion for a very long time. I know. So we have to think about the things that residents wouldn't know about that are public health things that we're involved in. And 
Um, well, just now, like just from this meeting, I'm going to have my well water checked because now I'm like, oh my God, maybe I have lead poisoning. I'm having headaches. I'm like, now I'm all paranoid. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Good. Yeah, I scored like, one. I I'm like, oh one. man. <laughs> yeah. so, so true. Um, yeah, so, so many things. So many. Dennis, you've been very quiet. Do you have any thoughts for we in June? I like being quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the only thing that uh, Heather had uh, emailed me, I don't know if she wanted to touch upon this, but uh, we had a, uh, not a complaint, but um, a couple of things on a I'm house. Sorry. 40, uh, what was it, 57? Mm -hmm. oh, oh. Um, so, yes, I did take a ride by yesterday, stopped, took a couple of pictures, basically saw, I think what everybody else saw, is that a tree had fallen on the house. There were two holes in the roof. Um, the house is very old. I didn't go around the back of the house. There's a, a tarp that looks like it may have been on the back of the house also. Um, but looking back at the emails, I think I saw exactly what everybody else saw was a house that's probably in very disrepair with one light on inside. And I really don't know if anybody was living there. Uh, so I do know that I did, I ducked to the building inspector and she said that, um, and I saw that on email, that the police chief sent over somebody from advocates. Now I'm not exactly sure. I assume they're a social service agency that- the They are, elder, elder protective services. Okay. They also okay. do mental health uh, okay. for younger right. people too, Advocates does. Um, so I, I think they're going to go back again. Um, I think they knocked on the door and they got no response. So at this point, I don't think anybody knows, they're not sure if she's living in there, but they do know that she's been out with, without water for a year or so. Um, so she's smarter than you, Nancy. She's not drinking the water. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, so at, at this point, I, I think we're just, it's kind of not waiting to see, but I know Heather was asking about, you know, what, what can we do as a health department? So everybody says, uh, you know, condemn it. And we, we probably have the authority to do that. And we so, can use a. So to Dennis, to your point, so this is another example of police, fire, and public health working together with potentially DPW to help a resident who a concerned citizen raised a complaint that this older woman is living in a house that's not safe and they doesn't have any water. And so this is a, a public health thing that we do um, and, and, and trying to figure out what is the best resolution for yeah. this person if she is living there, um, where do we go? And you have to know the laws, you have to know the statutes, you have to know what you can do, what you can't do. and um, and I think sometimes residents don't realize that we get involved in those things too. Right. And this one's a tougher one. So we, we believe that she doesn't want any help. Right. So th that's what becomes, you know, so. Then you so, don't know if she's thinking clearly or, you know, has. Okay, so these become, yeah, the quick and the quick down and dirty thing is, uh, is, is, is condemn the house because it, it, it lacks water. Um, however, the condemnation order goes to the owner, okay, which is the person that's living in the house. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. So, so she owns the house. Our recourse is with the owner. So, so what do we? So, what did we accomplish at this point by just saying, okay, we know your house is bad. Now go fix it, um, and take her out of out of the house because you condemned it as unfit for habitation. So, so, so I think. This becomes more of a social service avenue at this point. Um, and then once again, if it's if it's Nancy that owns the house and this person's renting, yes. Then we go in all guns blazing and tell Nancy, that's it. We're condemning your house. You right. do something with the tenant, you go fix it. Um, much more easier to deal with. So I think right now she's being at least not looked after, but looked at. And, you know, and then we can see what comes up after that. 
And, you know, I told Heather, I said, our role in this could be basically just leaning on another agency, you know, whether it's home elder, uh, somebody and say, you know what, um, she needs help, you know, more, more so than just a neighbor calling. Okay. So, um, so that's where we're at. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's sad, but, you know, we kind of work within the frame we have. Right. So that's where yeah. we're at with Thanks, Dennis. Yeah. A look at it. I just want to see what the back looks like. I'm not sure if anybody actually has gone there. Just, just, um, just for our own. It could be the whole back of the house is gone. I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So I mean, we'll 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 keep it in our sights, and you know, I can touch a base with the building inspector. <clears throat> time I'm in here. So. Okay. Okay, I think Great. we covered everything and um, we'll be in touch on the next um, Board of Health meeting. Sounds good. Uh, probably be mid-March unless something comes up. Um, if we're fortunate to find a public health nurse um, before that, we will have a meeting right away. Um, and Emily, you send out all your feelers too, anyone that, that you know of, and hopefully we'll have somebody on board soon. So I'd like to adjourn the meeting and thank you all for your thank time. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. And um, we'll be sending out the info, Nancy, for you to um, look at for uh, our presentation. Great, thanks. And Tim, thank you. Uh, thank you, Tim. Yeah. Happy to help. All right. All right. Thanks Bye -bye. for staying on, Emily. And thanks, Heather. Great job so far, my goodness. <laughs> thank you. All right. All right. See you guys. Nancy. Bye bye. bye. Yeah.